Were you able to observe any individuals from that last stag leap herd that was crossing into Idaho along the ridge there with snowy top and little snow? As of late, or no? I mean, yeah. back back in the oh night. the original herd. Yeah, yeah, on, on flights. Mm. Um, you know, they collared a bunch of those animals. They'd gone in. Servine had, had gone in and actually had darted some. So we had a few collars out, and we did. Uh, we actually went on a, a number of um, mortality investigations up into BC with that herd over the years. So, so either snow. Usually, a lot of those were uh, winter ones. We had several summer ones uh, that happened in there. So, can you remember anything about those collars, the adopted caribou collars? Oh yeah. Any specific names or decorations? I don't remember any names or decorations, but that was a big thing in the grade schools here. Is adopting a caribou, and it was a, it was a good attempt, you know, by the agencies to to get buy-in and and educate and inform the local community. So, um, yeah, it was a good program, and uh, I think the kids had fun with it. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't remember any caribou names. There were quite a few, pretty colorful collars. <laughs> yeah. So this is your your typical at the time. We're using a, they didn't have uh, GPS satellite reporting collar so this is a VHF signal collar that uh, puts out a, a VHF signal you pick up with the receiver and it helps you pinpoint the location of the animal. It has a um, two modes, an active and a mortality mode. So you always dreaded you go on a flight looking for caribou that you'd start hearing that uh, mortality mode. The, on the active mode it would actually have a slower uh, signal uh, as far as repeating it'd be a beep, 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 and then when it went inactive, which means the animal had been in mobile for a period of time, that that the frequency picked up, and it's beep, 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 say, so, okay, you had a, a mort. And that either meant the animal dropped the collar and was laying on the ground, or that it had died from one cause or another, and it was laying there immobile for a period of time. And then we would use the signals to go find and locate the um, the dead animal, the carcass, and investigate and see you know why it died, if you could. So that was that was basically you know that went on with every one of those animals. They all eventually left, died, or something happened to them. So it was always follow up. These would last about three years. So after you did have some that outlived the collars, of course, and the collar would either fall off or the signal would die, the battery would die. And stop reporting. Mm. And same thing, put these on grizzly bears, elk, moose, deer. It was kind of the standard collar of the time. Now they're much uh, better technology. They're, they're GPS satellite reporting. So the biologist can sit at his desk and uh, with a laptop and locate the animal. And, Doesn't have to go out and play. Yep. And and you you can download all the uh, every time the thing would uplink to the satellite, it would record all the uh, data for locations so you just see a series of dots where the animal was at during that period and so much easier less risky for people who don't have to fly as much which is nice mm -hmm. and uh, gives you better better information so it's a good thing but, uh, that was the standard for the day